Hello, I'm Andy Webb and welcome to this Facebook Live from the Money Advice Service. Now, all this week on our blog and on social media, we've been talking about money worries with that hashtag TalkMoneyWorries, which you can follow on all those social channels. And within good reason. Uh, a third of people say their money worries make them anxious. And we're going to learn in a minute about why that's the case and why not talking about these worries can cause dire consequences for you and your finances. Today, as part of that theme, the Money Advice Service has released some research um, around problem debt and most, more specifically, spotting the signs of debt. Now, if you've got any questions during this Facebook Live, please do put them away in the comments and we'll get back to you uh, throughout the chat. Now, to go through this research, I've been joined by our debt expert, Caroline Hamilton. Uh, we're going to go through the research, share some of the ways you can help yourself and also the ways you can help your friends and family when debt worries start to maybe overwhelm you or overwhelm them. Caroline, uh, hello. So why talk money worries uh, and why specifically debt as well? Well, we, as a nation, we're just not great about talking about money. It's still very much a taboo subject. In fact, our research shows that nearly half of us keep money secrets from our partners. So it's not hard to understand that when it's actually we're talking about money difficulties, people are going to even greater lengths to try and conceal that. And actually, at this point in time, one in six UK adults are either feeling overwhelmed by the debt that they have or are struggling to make payments. So it's such a sh and, and many of those will actually be, be suffering in silence. So it's a shame because there's so much help available out there that we really feel it's important to get the conversation started so that we can help these people that need the help. And again, yeah, there's one in six people that, yeah, that debt we could become crisis debt. Explain a little bit what the difference is between just having you know, some, some debts which are kind of possibly quite healthy like a mortgage or even a student loan or potentially having debts that can cause problems of equal, you know, this, this term crisis debt. Yeah well look, there are times when we're all allowed to take out a little bit of money. I mean, you mentioned a mortgage, you know, it's, it's something that lots of people do, you know, borrow to, to make a big purchase like that. What tends to happen though when people fall into crisis debt is it's normally triggered by something that upsets the balance of their finances. So they've maybe had a life event like redundancy or a period of illness that's meant that either their income has gone down or their spending has gone up. And what tends to happen in that situation is that people turn to credit for help and borrowing can spiral out of control and you know over time that can actually lead to real difficulty in making payments, you know, juggling, struggling to keep up, maybe going without essentials like food in order to pay debts, or, or borrowing more to keep the, the, the repayments going. And that one in six, that's a, that's a huge number of people who are at risk of this happening to them. But I guess the whole point of this research is that we don't necessarily know that, do we? These, these kind of, people don't talk about it, as you say. Yeah. And this could be going on to someone you know, one in six means there's a good chance that you do know someone who's potentially at risk of going uh, at yeah, home real problems because of debts. Yeah, and, and the real shame is that people who do come forward to seek advice, you know, so eventually, you know, when people have been juggling for a while and they hit crisis and they come forward for advice, what they all tell us is that they really wish that they'd done it sooner. And again, our research showed that when we spoke to friends and family members of people that were struggling with debts, they told us that they had an inkling that something was wrong, but they just didn't know how to start that conversation. So. I mean, that's, that's one of the things, I guess, that, that's really interesting about this, is, is we're talking about the signs of debt, that's the, the research. And surprisingly, this kind of work hasn't been done um, before, no one's really looked into kind of what, what to look for. No, that's right. So what, um, what are some of these, what is the research, I guess, and what are some of these signs? So the signs um, of, of, of a debt problem or somebody worrying about debt can be much the same about somebody worrying about anything, really. You know, they might seem anxious, they might seem worried or depressed or withdrawn, they might be having trouble sleeping, you might notice differences in their weight or their appetite, you know, they might be um, putting on weight or, or eating less, which is something that happens, you know, common, is a common sign of, of, of stress. Um, but there are some symptoms that might point to that being a money situation. Um, for instance, if they've been in debt in the past, um, you know, debt problems can, can reoccur. Um, if they've had a life event, that means that their income might have gone down. So we talked about redundancy or, or being ill or, or maybe losing a partner. You know, all of these things will upset a, a household finance. Um, other examples might be that you just simply think that somebody's living beyond their means. You know, if they're living a lifestyle and you just don't know how they're able to sustain it, it could be that they're storing up a problem for the future. 
And then, you know, you might notice that someone suddenly changes their spending habits. So if somebody all of a sudden is unable to do the things that they normally would, or they seem to be spending a lot less than they normally would, um, you know, that might, might indicate that their, 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 their available um, income is, is not stretching as, as far as it needs to, and, and they might be really struggling and juggling. And I guess the important thing here is that obviously these signs don't necessarily mean that someone's got you know debt or even crisis debt even at all, but it's little things just to look out for, as you say, and combinations yeah. of them, or just at least asking that question. Yeah, that's right, because we all do some of these things, you know, leading up to payday, or if we're saving for something, or, or if one's just a little bit short because we've had to stump up some money for an unexpected cost. Um, so it's right that people will cut back from time to time. But I suppose what this research says is that if you're already worried about somebody, if there's already an inkling that something's wrong, these might just be the things that you can um, you know, use to try and position the conversation appropriately and bring up the subject of money if it's not, if it's not immediately obvious. So, I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? These are things that are probably going to be hidden, that people aren't going to necessarily open about it. We know yeah. that that's why we're asking people to, to look for these signs and symptoms within their friends and family. But, I mean, there's lots of reasons why people might not be talking about it in the first place. What, what are the kind of things that people, when they are experiencing this, this problem debt that they, they might be going through that might then, you know, what you might manifest themselves in some of these, these symptoms? Yeah, well, the research, one of the things that came through the research quite strongly was embarrassment. You know, if, if we're not a nation that talks about money, we're even less likely to want to talk about it when things are going wrong. Um, one of the reasons why people don't feel the need to seek help early, um, you know, we're all inherently optimistic, so we all hope that something will turn up, that things will improve. Sometimes there is pressure to carry on as normal, so pressure from friends or family to keep up with, with a lifestyle or, or a spending pattern, even though something might have changed to make that unaffordable. Well, another reason why people don't come forward for help is that they just simply don't know that help is out there. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a real shame because there is a lot of good quality debt advice available. And, you know, debt advisors, yes, they'll happily deal with people when there's a crisis, but they actually want to speak to people sooner. They'd actually rather people come and speak to them at the first sign of a problem. That's the key thing, isn't it? If you, if you leave it too late and talk about debt snowballing and getting out of control, the key here is to get in early and get that help as soon as you can. Yeah. There are people that come for advice when once a crisis has hit, and, and really there's no need for anybody to know what that crisis feels like. There's always something a debt advisor can do to alleviate the problem, to, to help replan, or to, to try and get you back on track before you end up in a, in a terrible situation. And for people who don't know about your debt advice, it's, it's freely available. You don't have to pay for this, do you? You can kind of get it That's all right. over. Yeah, and the debt advice is actually available in a range of ways. So you can get high quality debt advice um, by going and seeing somebody face to face. There are specialist debt advisors that can help you over the phone. There are actually some really good interactive online tools that you can use to get the help online. Um, and details of all of these are available on the Money Advice Service website. We've got a fabulous page called Where to Get Free Debt Advice that will help you find a debt advice service that's right for you. And you're right, all of the services listed on there are free. And we can put a link in the comments now, where hopefully someone will be doing this as we speak, to where those, some of those tools are on, on the Money Advice Service website. You can have a look and find that stuff near you. And an interesting statistic actually about people when they do get debt advice is how effective it is quite quickly. I was quite surprised how soon the problems start to be resolved. Yeah, this is the thing. So what we know from people that do seek debt advice is that most of them tell us they wish they'd done it sooner. They also tell us that things start to feel instantly better, so that stress and worry can, can lift almost immediately. Um, they start sleeping better. Yeah. And actually, within three months of people having sought advice, nearly two-thirds of them have either got a good plan in place to pay it down or they've entered into a debt solution that means that they don't have to repay anything at all. And it's interesting, it's not just about fixing the, the finance as well, it's the idea that people are sleeping better, their relationships are better, so if they are talking about money, I'm not talking about it, but at least they're not arguing about it yeah, as much they've now. They've got the headspace to perform yeah. work, um, yeah, that can reach into all areas of, of life, so getting it solved means that everything starts to feel better. So go back to these signs and symptoms. So say you've spotted some of them. Say so you know people are living beyond their means, and they kind of you know they can't be affording the kind of lifestyle they've got, or they're that sudden change, or, or any of the others. You've seen that in your friend or in your family member. What uh, what can you do to help them? I think don't be afraid to have the conversation. You know, if, if if you if you go at it gently and you ask the right questions, just encourage that person to open up. In fact, you know another thing that came through the research was that where the friend or family member had been through that themselves, 
Um, right. you know, they, yeah, so, so bringing in your own experiences could, um, could, could also be a way. I think the important thing to highlight is that there's always light at the end of the tunnel. There's, there's always something that can be done to solve a debt problem and encourage them to get help. As you say, there's lots of services out there and they are available on the Money Advice Service website. We've got a, um, a debt test as well that you can take on the Money Advice Service website. You can either take that possibly about your friend or with your friend or just send it to them to take it themselves. And that will kind of maybe kind of get an indication, I guess, of the different types of debts yeah. and maybe different solutions. Yeah, and, and there's advice on dealing with different types of debts. And you know, even if it's not at reach the stage where a debt advisor is, uh, where, where debt advice is needed, there are some useful tools on the website as well that can help you replan the money that you have so that you can make best use of every penny. And, and hopefully, that's all that's needed. And I'm what interesting actually about debt because you know, one in six people at risk of crisis debt. That's what we said, it could be anyone, but are there certain groups who you think are probably more at risk of getting into, the, you know, in danger of, of the, the problem, debt kind of real problem, and perhaps more likely to kind of display some of these, these yeah. symptoms? I, I think you're right to say that a debt problem can happen to anybody because it can. You know, any one of us could end up in, in a situation where our income reduces through yeah. no fault of our own. But our research does show that if you're living in rented accommodation, you are more likely to, um, to, to fall into problem debt. Larger families are more likely to be struggling with financial difficulty, single parents as well, um, and younger people, so people between the ages of 25 and 34 are also okay. um, particularly at risk of falling into to problem debt. So it could be anyone, but those groups well, may be sort of maybe yeah. more likely to display those symptoms, those signs of the debt causing a problem. And, and I'm not saying have an intervention, but have a conversation, isn't it? Just chat them and say, are they all right? What's going on? Yeah. Um, and offer that opportunity to Yeah, to help. let them know that help is available, let them know that debt advisors are happy to speak to people sooner, it doesn't have to be a crisis to warrant the help of a debt advisor, um, and just give them the encouragement that they might need to actually recognise the problem themselves. You know, what we know about people when they are in financial difficulty is they struggle on for as long as they can, and that becomes a way of life. Sometimes just having somebody else point that out can make all the difference. And as I said at the beginning, this is you know this hashtag talk money worries is not just about debt. It's about any kind of money worry, any kind of anxiety that is caused by your finances. Because some people that you know very easily can be worried about their financial situation, but have zero debts, have no worries, not be one of those six at risk of crisis mm -hmm. debt. But there's still stuff that happens to everyone um, where they're concerned about the state of their, their finances. Yeah. Are there are there certain simple things that the people are watching who are feeling like that, they kind of think, well, I am a bit stressed about it, but I'm okay. But things they can do to kind of get the house in order. Yeah, get it written down, you know, understand where the money's going, um, you know, and at least that will give you sight of where the pinch points are. We've got a fabulous budget planner on the Money by Service website that can help with that. Um, and other tricks and tools like keeping a spending diary if yeah. you're not sure where money's going. Um, and checking your balance every day has been proven to help keep on track and make money last from one payday to the next. Um, and talk about it, you know, like we said earlier yeah. that lots of people actually have secrets from their partner, you know, if you're yeah. just honest about money with the people around you, then it just makes having those conversations easier. And you talked about, you know, some of the friends and family who want to keep doing things, spending money to their budget, if you can't afford it, you know you don't have that money, I know it's difficult to kind of, to say no, but say no, say that I can't afford it, but be honest why, it's yeah. kind of like, no I can't because I'm saving up for this, or I know I'm a bit short this month, right, and hopefully, well, I actually had a friend say something to me in quite a nice way, actually, just a couple of weeks ago. You know, she came out with me and she said, I want a bit of a budget tonight. I'm going to be drinking half lagers. If you want to join me for a half lager, I'll buy the first round, but I'm not buying Prosecco. So, you know, it can be done without being antisocial, definitely. <laughs> um, Carolyn, thank you so much for, for joining us now for this Facebook Live. Um, you can read more about the report on the Money Advice Service blog and on the Money Advice Service website. Go to moneyadviceservice.org.uk forward slash talk money worries. Um, as with the hashtag for the week is talk money worries on both Facebook and Twitter. And um, do you know, add any more questions. If you just come to this later on, add questions below and we'll be able to get back to you with any responses. Cheers. <laughs>